Hello, good evening, and welcome to Majesty Christian TV tonight. My name is uh, Apostle Larry, and uh, it's my joy to bring to you the Word of the Living God. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, grant us this privilege and blessing of receiving the words of life. Holy Spirit, we ask you to brood upon these words that they shall become creative agents in our lives. We thank you for this blessing. Pray that everyone who is watching this program shall receive a message and shall be blessed through your word. We thank you and we bless you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and Amen. Welcome once again in case you are just tuning in. I for this month, I have been, uh, the whole of this month, I have been speaking on the topic, um, knowing Christ fully or knowing Jesus fully. Uh, and let me quickly, you know, say that unless you know somebody fully, you cannot receive uh, all that the person has to offer. And so, um, I've taken the time to do, do this teaching to help reveal uh, other aspects of Jesus to you and hopefully that would uh, inspire you to open up more to relate to him and to be able to receive from him hallelujah so I'm speaking on Jesus the Good Shepherd or Jesus our Good Shepherd now let me take my scripture reading from the Gospel of St. John Gospel of St. John from chapter 1, chapter 10, verse 1. John chapter 10, verse 1. And here begins the reading of the word of the Lord. It says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is a shepherd, of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own by name, and he leads them out. When he has done, he has brought out all his own, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him. For they do not know the voice of strangers. Now, this scripture is talking about a shepherd and sheep. Uh, it's actually uh, a metaphor uh, which Jesus is using here. He is not literally speaking of uh, sheep as we know, as we have the animal sheep. Uh, uh, and, and a shepherd per se, but he's speaking of uh, his, uh, his, one of his roles as a leader, as someone who takes care of people, or of his creation, or of those he is responsible for. Hallelujah. Now, so he addresses himself as a shepherd and he also he mentioned the fact that there is a stranger or there is someone who enters not by the door but by another means and that is not uh, the good shepherd that is not the true shepherd of the sheep okay verse 7 Jesus again said to them truly truly I say to you I am the door of the sheep all who come before or who came before me are thieves and robbers but the sheep did not listen to them I am the door. Any, if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and find. He will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, he does not own the sheep. 
sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. Now every one of us is represented by what Jesus is talking about here. We are sheep. Now what does that mean? Now I've, perhaps you have realized that every one of us from the time we were born through the stages of growth we, we, we experience and go through up until our old age we need leadership we need guidance we do not know it all and so we always look up to somebody we always turn to somebody for advice we always depend upon the insight or the wisdom of somebody around us or somebody somewhere in the world that means we are we we yield ourselves to the leadership of people in a country for example we have political leaders we are people who we have elected and placed them in the government and they rule the country they make decisions they they they, they make policies which affect us those are our leaders those are shepherds the same applies in the home we have the father and the mother who are like shepherds over the family talk about the school uh, uh, and other institutions you can you know think you can imagine you see in life we are meant to be led and Jesus explains this relationship of the sheep and the shepherd now where there is no shepherd and where there is no proper leadership or guidance uh, people make a lot of mistakes now the shepherd obviously knows better knows where there's uh, pasture where there is water for the sheep and so the shepherd uh, is able to guide the sheep to safety you know to a place where they can drink and they can rest and they can i mean he takes them to places where uh, they they receive you know the very best possible treatment hallelujah and so that is the importance and the role of the shepherd in the life of the sheep now jesus introduces himself as a good shepherd this is a good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep we human beings are, are not so inclined to lay down our lives for other people it's it's something that anyone will hardly do hallelujah and so when you are looking up to your president your king your queen your pastor your bishop if ever you are looking up to them to lay down their life for you i want you to know that it will never happen because Everyone values his or her life so dearly. They are willing to give you advice and to tell you, suggest to you what you can do to solve your problems, but they will, they are never likely to give up their lives for you. So, they are shepherds, yes, but they are old, what you call under shepherds. They probably may be hirelings because some of them will hire them to rule the country for four years and then hand over. But Jesus Christ of Nazareth introduces himself as a good shepherd. Hallelujah. As a good shepherd. And, and that is why he is able to lay down his life for the sheep. But also he leads the sheep where they will find pasture. And where they will find water to drink. Praise the Lord. Now, so with that leadership, with that proper leadership, I should have said, we are likely to fall into diverse kinds of mistakes and errors. We will find ourselves trying many things. You know, finding out things by trial and, and error. And that has a lot of risks and a lot of, uh, there's a lot of wastage in that as well. Amen. Now, so when we talk of Jesus, or we introduce Jesus as the good shepherd we are actually 
referring to him as someone who is capable of leading us so well that wherever we are meant to be or are to arrive at in life we will succeed at that because he knows the way he even refers to himself in this passage as the door is there anybody who comes through me will enter he said i am the door whoever comes through me will enter the sheepfold i'm looking for that particular verse here but in essence that's what he's saying now if jesus is the door you know we know that doorways are are channels to uh places to opportunities uh to new levels to new relationships to new opportunities to, to new uh horizons just name it doors are very important doors are very very important and he jesus christ the son of the living god one of his attributes is that he is the good shepherd he is a leader of leaders hallelujah and so if you come through him then you will enter the places and you will enter the the opportunities that you will enter the dreams that you have you have you, you are ever hoping and desiring to achieve that is the work of the good shepherd to lead you to green pastures to lead you beside still waters hallelujah and so many of us are out there we have made so many mistakes and we have failed and failed and failed it is time to turn over the direction of your life the leadership of your life to the good shepherd because he will direct you well amen now the bible tells us in proverbs chapter 14 the verse 12 that there is a way there is a way that seemed right unto a man but the end thereof is death and i was sharing this uh message and this example came to me uh sometimes you look ahead of you like if you look ahead of you or let's say you are driving traveling on the road or walking at the path you look ahead of you all the way far into the distance you will see that everything looks clear and there's no obstacle there's nothing to worry about there's no danger nothing to fear but then you hit that road and you begin to go and suddenly you find out that there's no end or suddenly you end up where you didn't plan to be and then you say oh i made a mistake and then you want to turn back recently we were traveling from a one function uh in amsterdam and we were coming back in the night and so we we're following the direction of the navigator and it was pointing us some funny direction we end up in a very strange place it was so dark there are no lights we don't know where to, where to go from there and he meanwhile we we're following the navigator's instruction and now we had to use our discretion to turn back and begin to retrace our steps and then finally the navigator reconnected you know far found his way and then we we're back on track look at how you know human wisdom can mislead us the logic in the navigator is human by the way see so that which a man has made a, a man has will always be faulty and so where you have experienced a lot of failures and you've missed your steps and opportunities and you have ended up in the wrong places the wrong relationships the wrong jobs the wrong companies the wrong church even it's because you were following what you thought was right only for you to end up in the wrong place hallelujah but now jesus christ one of his attributes is that he is the good shepherd and uh, the, the the adjective good there qualifying the the the, the, the you know his, his title as a shepherd means that in comparison to others he is better he is he's good he is the good one amen and so you have an opportunity and i have an opportunity to to yield ourselves to the leadership and the direction of jesus praise the lord 
I think it's very, very important to re-emphasize this because today in the church, we are all uh, experiencing uh, leadership that is failing us. Even sometimes leaders with the best of intentions still make mistakes. So, it is because we are leaning on the wisdom of man. We are leaning on the wisdom of man. Hallelujah. But, here Jesus is introducing himself unto us as the good shepherd. Now, let me go to um, somebody who gave a testimony of uh, having yielded his life. After having yielded his life to the leadership of Jesus, to the shepherdhood of Jesus. And then let's um, learn a few things and maybe we'll be inspired by that person's experience. This person may not be uh, a stranger to you. The Bible calls him David. David the shepherd boy. Now, he says in Psalm 23, he says, The Lord is my shepherd. Now, here is a shepherd boy calling someone else his shepherd. So, think of it. We're talking about leadership here. Now, in whose hands are you safe? Under whose direction are you secure? Look at what happened in, um, in the Philippines. Th that typhoon which has destroyed lives and destroyed property. So assuming that the people of the country have put all their confidence in the politicians, could they, that is these politicians, have saved them from the storm? Certainly no. There was no way, there was no way, there was no way. People have invested money, they have, you know, done projects, and now all of these things have been wiped out right now because of this, this typhoon. Hallelujah. Now, I can imagine, and I'm not, I know I won't be far from right, that certain people who have yielded them, themselves to the leadership, the guidance, and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, would have been moved to take some steps against the disaster what that was forthcoming. You know, the way Jesus leads us, he makes sure that we are delivered from trouble. We are delivered from harm. We are delivered from things that can affect us terribly. That's the kind of leadership Jesus offers us. So when he introduces himself as the good shepherd, it means that he is even able to put himself in harm's way to protect us. That's why he says, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now, now David, the shepherd boy, now testifies, tells us about his encounter with the good shepherd. That is the Lord. He says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, he talks about what? Not wanting. The good shepherd leads and provides our needs. A, a leader is one who will make sure that every aspect of your life is, take, is catered for. The needs in your life are provided for. There are some leaders who only delight in using people and they don't care anything else about their well-being. But it is not so with the Lord. David says, when I walked with him, I saw that he led me in such a way that I didn't lack anything. That is a mark of a good shepherd who cares and feels for the sheep under his authority. And he says, he leads me in green pastures. That's abundance. God will always bring you into overflow. Hallelujah. Jesus is that kind of leader. In fact, the scripture tells us that whilst he was on earth, there were people who were following him for days, and even the people, you know, did not really think about the fact that, uh, you know, they were going to last that long. You see? And then for three days or so, they didn't have food. But Jesus, feeling their situation, feeling for their situation, decided to provide for them. How? He worked a miracle which 
provided more than enough for them. A good leader feels and thinks about your well-being. Amen? And then he says he leads, you, leads us beside the still waters. Still waters are, if ever you have gone beside to some places, let's say in a, along a river or a stream, there are some parts of the stream whereby it's so cool, it's so pleasant, it's so refreshing that when you sit or you lie down there, you know, you, you are restored, you are refreshing because the whole atmosphere is serene, it is calm, it's peaceful, it's reviving. The good shepherd leads people to places where they are not confronted with hazards and, and struggles and hardship, but they are what? Restored and renewed. That is the kind of leader Jesus is and we want to be to you. Hallelujah. If you are listening to this broadcast and you have noticed in your life certain turbulences and certain shakings in your life, then I want to recommend to you that you seriously turn your heart and your attention to the leadership and the guidance of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. I, and I'm introducing him to you in this, in this fashion for you to know that he is your Savior, he is your Lord, he washes away your sins, but he also is able to lead you. He has introduced himself like that, and that's why I'm presenting him that way as the good shepherd so david is telling us how the lord helped him how he led him and then he goes on to say that though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me everybody faces tough times threatening times scary times as one point or the other but jesus is one kind of a leader who never abandons us in our rough times, in our times of desperation. In fact, the Bible says that he even leads us through them. Now, I was sharing a story of how one time as a small boy, I was working with uh, an uncle or a relative like that, and it was dark. We are going through this place. He was holding me by the hand, but... You know, as a child, normally children don't like darkness. They fear darkness, you see, because they tell stories among themselves about this monster, about that monster. So children have all these fantasies, and so they hate darkness. They really hate darkness. <laughs> but as a child, when I was working with this man, I was amazed. I was so confident and so sure, even though I was walking through darkness. That is how it is to work with Jesus. In fact, you can be walking through the most turbulent and the most scary of times. Yet, you will not be afraid. Why? Because the one who protects you, the one who makes sure no harm comes to you, is walking with you. That's why he says, the psalmist says, When I walked with him, I saw that he walked through the valley of the shadow with me, and I didn't fear nothing. Because he, is, he was with me. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, well, maybe you are going through the, the roughest state of your life right now. But if you yield yourself to the leadership and the direction, the guidance of the Lord Jesus, then you can be assured that you will fear no evil. Rather, He will comfort you. He will give you the strength you need to go through those times. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Many people are without comfort today because the men and the women they've leaned upon have disappointed them, have broken their hearts. The leaders you thought would stand with you, they, 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 they are even trying to help themselves. But not Jesus, not the good shepherd. He takes care of his own. I want to recommend you to Jesus. I want to suggest that you yield yourself to his leadership. Let me quickly finish. Then it says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Wow. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. When the enemy is seeking and is waiting and watching for an opportune time to attack you or to laugh at you, the Bible says as long as the good shepherd is around, 
as long as Jesus is with you, what is going to happen is that he's going to just lay out a lavish table before you. He's going to lay out before your enemies a lavish feast where you will be celebrated. Hallelujah. You will be celebrated. Your enemy will see that you, have, you suddenly have an abundance. For those of you who have, who have had so many enemies or you, you have so many enemies, let me tell you something. Better connect with the good shepherd because he will make sure that your enemies are embarrassed. He will lay a fist, a lavish fist in front of you and before them in their very eyes. Say, I receive that. Hallelujah. Then he says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He said, Surely. Why is he said, Surely? He has seen something. He said, Wow. This leader, this shepherd is, is without equal. Because from the way I have seen him leading me all my life, all my life, and with all I have experienced, the way I've seen this shepherd guiding and leading me, surely, surely, as he said, surely I can only conclude that only goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I recommend to you the leadership of Jesus. Let him be your, your Lord, your leader, your master, and you will be amazed how your life will turn around to be. The Lord bless you richly. It's been my pleasure sharing this short book with you. And if you have any questions or you would like prayer, uh, give me a call on the number that is shown on the screen or will be showing shortly. And uh, I'll be more than glad to pray with you or to counsel you or to encourage you. The Lord bless you richly for spending this time with me. And I look forward to coming your way again next Sunday. God bless you. Bye-bye.